Hello and welcome to the 2024 Point in Time Count Survey Training. Thank you for joining us in this important effort to improve the understanding of homelessness in your community. The survey component of the local point in time count effort provides important demographic and subpopulation information regarding persons and families experiencing homelessness across the community. In this training, we will cover the following. The purpose of the survey, the role of the surveyor, how to conduct the survey, working with the survey coordinator, and next steps. The purpose of the survey is to provide service providers and funders more information about the experiences and characteristics of individuals experiencing homelessness. As you may know, the pick count was just a visual count of people without housing. During the survey, we will actually talk to people and ask them about their experiences. We are asking you to conduct these surveys so that we can get the most accurate data possible from a diverse group of people experiencing homelessness. Surveyors with lived experience of homelessness will be paid $10 per completed survey, which is paid in cash by a survey coordinator upon receiving and reviewing a submitted batch of completed surveys. The surveys will not be accepted if they are incomplete. Respondents are allowed to skip questions, but if it gets to a point where too many questions are skipped and the survey is not complete, we cannot accept it. Individuals completing the survey will receive a gift card as a thank you gift. Surveyors will give thank you gifts to survey respondents after they have completed taking the survey. Surveys will take about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. You may notice the first few surveys may take longer, but as you get more familiar with the survey, it won't take quite as long to administer. Individual survey data is anonymous and will only be seen by the research team from ASR. Make sure to be in a semi-private setting when conducting the survey. Results from the survey will be summarized in the Pitt and Survey reports later this year. Surveyors will administer throughout the community and proportionally to the locations observed through the Pitt count process. Surveyors should only go to their assigned district, which will be given to them by their survey coordinator. Make sure not to do too many surveys in one area. A survey of people living in transitional housing programs will also occur. Surveyors will be focused on surveying people experiencing unsheltered homelessness or accessing nightly shelter services. This includes people who are sleeping in the streets, in a tent, vehicle, RV, encampment, abandoned building, or in another place not meant for human habitation. When conducting surveys, approach respondents using a random selection process. This requires you to identify possible respondents and approach every third possible respondent you see. If the person you have selected refuses or does not wish to participate in the survey, make a tally on the refusal line and continue to the next person. If people continue to refuse, continue to mark a tally at the top of the same survey form until someone says yes. As soon as someone completes the survey, continue with the third person selection process. This will be challenging as you'll be tempted to administer the survey to the most willing respondent. In order for us to get the best understanding of what the entire population of people experiencing homelessness is like, you must try to interview only every third person in your area so that we can ensure a variety of people are represented in the survey. It is very important to follow the every third person selection process for administering the survey. Not following this rule results in non-random surveying and will result in less reliable findings. We do acknowledge that there are infrequent cases where you may need to interview who you can. Please try to provide potential survey respondents with a basic understanding of what will be covered, that it is anonymous, and that their personal data will not be shared. Introduce yourself and remember to ask if the person has already been interviewed for this project, as we do not want to interview anyone more than once, and if they would be willing to participate in the survey in exchange for a thank you gift. At the end of each completed interview, thank the respondent for their time and give them one incentive as a thank you gift. The housing survey asks questions about basic demographics of the respondent and others in their household, living situation on the night of the pit count, length and frequency of homelessness, veteran status, events or conditions that led to respondents' homelessness, service utilization, among other topics. Before administering the survey, please make sure you read the informed consent script. Approach individuals cautiously. Introduce yourself and briefly tell people about the survey. Let people know that their participation will help to inform funding for greatly needed homeless services. Please reassure respondents that their name will not be taken and their responses will be kept anonymous. We do record birthdays and initials to help avoid surveying individuals more than once, 
but no individual responses will be shared with anyone. Only interview one parent in a family or one person in a couple. There should not be an issue if you're selecting every third person in the random manner described. Additionally, only interview one person per vehicle. Do not let respondents fill out their own survey. It is important for the surveyor to administer each survey individually to assure quality and completeness. The response bubble needs to be filled in completely, not checked or crossed. All questions must be read to the respondent, except where there are instructions to skip to another question. However, respondents can choose to skip any question they do not feel comfortable answering. Please let them know this before beginning the survey. All responses or choices need to be read to the respondent. This is very important. You may need to repeat the question when there are too many options. Be unbiased. Please make no assumptions or prompts. If only one response is called for, do not accept multiple responses. Ask the respondent to only choose one. Skip patterns, which allow respondents to either skip or be directed to specific questions or sections, are included in the survey. Please be mindful of all skip patterns, like the example on this slide, and follow the instructions on the survey based on the person's response. There are questions that ask about the number of times and length of homelessness. These can get confusing, so please try to help people by repeating the question. For example, something along the lines of, I noticed you said this was the first time you had experienced homelessness in the previous question, but you said you have been without housing three times in the past three years. Should we change that earlier response? There are also questions regarding households. If survey respondents say they live alone, without any family members, a partner, or a spouse, please follow the skip pattern. However, if they say they live with people, you will ask about those people. For the purposes of the survey, we define a household as people with whom the survey respondent shares the same dwelling or living quarters. There is a section in the survey dedicated to health questions. Please ask respondents about each condition, and then ask if it prevents them from maintaining work, living in stable housing, or taking care of themselves. It is important to ask and fill out both sets of questions if the respondent is willing. Please be sure to fill out all the fields and questions, including the date and neighborhood where the survey was conducted. Please fill in bubbles completely. No X's, no check marks. Ignore blocks labeled for office use only. There are instructions on some of the questions that will tell you how to fill in the answer. For example, shade one. Some questions will instruct you to shade all that apply. For questions with multiple responses accepted, the answer choices are squares, like question four in the example on this slide. When conducting surveys, try to survey in areas that you're familiar with. Share information to get information. Introduce yourself and briefly tell people about the survey. Let people know that their participation will help to inform funding for greatly needed homeless services. Something along the lines of, hi, my name is Alex. I'm conducting a survey to understand the housing experiences of individuals in the community. Practice reflective listening. Restate and clarify what the respondent has said. For example, what I hear you saying is, avoid the term the homeless when referring to people. Instead, we recommend using people first language, like people experiencing homelessness, or if referring to the survey, the housing survey. We value the privacy of survey respondents and are committed to protecting the confidentiality of information. Please remember, some of the information that will be shared is deeply personal. Allow people to skip any question that makes them feel uncomfortable, and do not discuss or share anything you learn about the people you interviewed with anyone else. Please keep in mind that respondents should receive their thank you gift upon completion of the housing survey. Surveyors will receive their stipend when completed surveys are turned into the survey coordinator. Remember that safety always comes first. Be aware of your surroundings. Always conduct surveys in a place where you will not be completely alone, in public and in well-lit areas whenever possible. Keep in mind that the nature of the questions you'll be asking are personal, so it's recommended that surveys take place in a semi-private setting. Avoid interrupting or disturbing people that are asleep or are in a similar state and unable to participate in the conversation. Do not walk into tents, encampments, or abandoned buildings. Avoid any situation in which you are uncomfortable. 
If a person you are surveying becomes belligerent or you feel unsafe for any reason, stop the survey. Please feel free to end the survey and walk away. Call 911 if you are in any danger. Surveyors will be turning in their completed surveys to their survey coordinator, who will be reviewing them, providing payment, and if there are still surveys to be done, providing surveyors with more surveys and incentives. We ask that you arrange a plan to meet with your survey coordinator for pickup and drop off of surveys and payment. Please respect your coordinator's time and the hours they have arranged with you. Please note, surveys that are incomplete may be rejected by your coordinator. Thank you in advance for your participation in the 2024 Homeless Count and Survey. We couldn't do this without you, and we look forward to seeing your great work.